Good morning, my name is Sean uh, with Space to Storage Group. Um, we're shooting a quick video um, just to do um, a little bit of an explanation with regards to some of the benefits of spray foam insulation. Uh, one of the other videos that we've done demonstrates the work actually being completed, but the purpose of this video is just to give a little bit of um, an explanation on why spray foam insulation could be beneficial. So obviously containers are constructed out of steel, um, and one of the things that can sometimes be a bit of a negative is at different times of the year when you do get extreme temperature changes, there can be condensation that develops predominantly on the roof of the container. Now, most containers do have venting of some type. Uh, this particular unit, as an example, does not. So we've chosen this one as, uh, to use as an example for that reason. So what happens is very simple. So the exterior temperature uh, essentially becomes warmer, and sometimes what you have is a roof that's cold, and maybe even snow that's sitting on top of it. And so the contraction of those temperatures creates condensation that will develop on the roof. So essentially, uh, spray foam insulation is a relatively expensive option, but ideally the best option if you are concerned uh, with condensation or with trying to regulate the temperature inside the box. Uh, there are some less expensive options, such as additional venting. Uh, there's some super practical things if the container's out of property uh, that you're uh, accessing regularly. It's really about airflow. So even something as simple as opening the doors, keeping the doors open for a period of time, being able to change out the air inside the container, those are all really, really good, simple things that you can do that cost nothing. But in a scenario where you're using the container in an environment where it's going to be closed for an extended period of time, spray foam insulation is just one of the options that you can consider with regards to protecting any items that you might be keeping inside. can choose to insulate any part of the container. Uh, we have some projects that we literally do the underside floor, the walls, the end wall, and the roof. Uh, the spray foam almost entirely is done internally to the container with the exception of the underside floor. Uh, there's a single cell uh, closed foam, a uh, two inch uh, closed cell foam. So there's different sort of layers or, or types of insulation that you can use. And, you know, if you're looking for some questions on that, you can get in touch with us and we can kind of explain to you what the pros and cons are of those different ones and the different price points attached with them. But spray foam insulation is essentially a very, very simplistic um, process and a very simplistic product. So uh, we bring in a third party company that does this work for us. This is not something that is done by us internally. One of the few things that we outsource just because there is a, a degree of um, speciality that's associated with the application of the, of the product. Um, but essentially, uh, if you refer to one of the videos, you'll see it being added to the interior walls. Um, and again, it's really just about insulating the inside of the container to guard against um, significant temperature changes and predominantly avoid condensation developing on the roof during those uh, temperature changes that occur usually in the spring and fall. It's almost a non-existent issue during either the winter where humidity levels are essentially non-existent um, and even in the summertime it's less of an issue. It's really where you get the uh, combination of warm and cold air uh, meeting each other that's creating that condensation on the roof of the container. By applying um, a closed cell foam or a spray foam insulation it will guard against that uh, from occurring.
So uh, one of the questions uh, that we routinely get asked uh, essentially is just the cost difference between a used container and a reconditioned container. Um, there, there might be some minor variances, but generally speaking, it's about $500. So when you think about the cost difference uh, from a used container to a reconditioned container, that $500 um, should be relatively accurate in terms of the price point. It will be a little bit um, different simply based on the size of the container that you're looking at. So naturally, um, a 40-foot container, as an example, is going to have a slightly um, higher price point uh, for a difference between a used and a reconditioned box. And that really just has to do with the additional amount of work and paint that's required to cover a 40-foot box instead of a 20-foot box. With used containers, we never have any control over the color of containers that we receive or collect from our shipping partners. Uh, we don't have any control over uh, kind of any exterior uh, shipping logos, any signage, anything like that on the exterior of the box. So when you buy a used container from us, essentially they come as is. Whereas with a reconditioned box, you have a little bit of control over the aesthetic of what it's going to look like sitting at the property, uh, where it's going to be placed and that also adds one additional layer, which is a protection to the exterior of the box. So we actually use a very, very specific um, type of paint that was uh, originally developed for underground pipelines. Uh, so it's something that uh, is used in a very um, high profile industrial application. We spent a lot of time kind of going through testing different paints, uh, you know, sometimes with some success, sometimes without success. And so uh, over a very long period of time, uh, we've settled on this particular brand of paint and this particular makeup of paint. Um, it is available in a few different colors if necessary, but a uh, significant volume of containers that we paint is essentially in the color that you see here uh, for one of a couple of reasons. A, it's just a kind of neutral, uniform color. Um, it also helps to hide any of the dents that are naturally going to be present in used equipment. Big thing is, the hinges um, are grinded and lubricated. The exterior is sandblasted, pressure washed, um, and any surface rust is, is uh, grinded down, okay, to try to make a, a smoother surface. Um, and then the marine grade uh, base paint is applied to the exterior. So those are the three kind of main things that you get above and beyond uh, the kind of base inspection process of all of the containers that we do. Um, so if you speak to one of our sales associates, they'll walk you through what the difference in that cost is, but it, it's quite minimal relative to the benefits that you get from all of those items being done to the box itself. But of course, any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us. As always, all of our equipment and containers are here at our facility to be viewed. Before you're thinking of uh, making a decision or before you actually follow through with the decision, that option is always available. So all of the equipment that we sell uh, is always handled by us first. So uh, essentially anything that we're showing to customers has already gone through a filtering process. And because of the volume that we sell, you know, not every single container that we get is good enough to be able to be sold onto the general public. So uh, there is a filtering process that we do uh, to ensure that everything that we send out to people um, is of a minimum standard. The reconditioning process just takes it one step beyond that. Um, and then essentially the next level beyond that would be a single use or a new container. For additional information, uh, please refer to any of our other videos uh, that we've done some filming on. Uh, any specific questions, please feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to help any way that we can.